as people criticized Blake Lively for being tone deaf and shallow in her promotion of the drama, she decided to confront domestic abuse in her latest movie, It Ends With Us. It Ends With Us, which is an adaptation of the well-known Colleen Hoover novel of the same name, follows Lily Bloom, Lively, as she enters an abusive relationship with neurosurgeon Rob Kincaid, Justin Baldoni. The advertising tour presented a completely different narrative, particularly emphasizing Lively's creative input and the flowery, romantic aspects of It Ends With Us, despite the film's somber premise. By posting a message and a PSA against violence against women to her Instagram story on Tuesday, Lively seemed to take note of the criticism. We appreciate all of the attendees who demonstrated that there is a demand for movies that feature women and the diversity we represent. The story of the feminine experience is told and it ends with us. The greatest peaks and the deepest valleys. And we're really proud of it. The former Gossip Girl wrote, We have been celebrating this film and getting such an important message out there to the masses. She went on, We want to express our gratitude to everyone who has embraced the movie at Iten with us movie and shared the same joy, love, and anguish we did. Overriding an interview clip from It Ends With Us London premiere, Lively penned her message, referring to her character as a survivor, whose life isn't defined by the pain that was done to her. This film explores domestic violence, but it's crucial to remember that the lead character is more than just a victim or a survivor. The actress stated on Friday, Even while those are enormous accomplishments, they do not define who she is. She defines herself, and I believe that reminding others that you are not defined by anyone else is quite powerful. You define who you are. No experience can define you, according to Lively. Tuesday, Lively gave her fans a link to the National Domestic Violence Hotline along with some facts on domestic abuse in the U.S. in a follow-up Instagram story post. She began by saying, One in four women in the U.S. who are 18 years of age and older have experienced severe physical abuse at the hands of an intimate partner at some point in their lives. Intimate partner abuse impacts individuals of all genders, impacting about 12 million Americans annually. Everyone is entitled to relationships free from violence against women, Lively replied. The National Domestic Violence Hotline provides confidential support 24-7-365. She included a link to the hotline in her message. Additionally, she urged people to text START to 88788 if they require urgent support. After weeks of worldwide promotion, it ends with us finally debuted in theaters this past Friday going up against Lively's husband Ryan Reynolds' superhero movie Deadpool and Wolverine at the box office. However, despite the film's serious theme, Lively has come under fire for her humorous talks about it, for her involvement in a recent conversation with It Ends With Us. Author Hoover and co-stars Jenny Slate and Isabella Ferrer, she was criticized as shallow and tone deaf. The four women laughed together while talking about anything from their zodiac signs to dream occupations. They did not bring up the subject of domestic abuse. And considering the serious tone of the movie, social media users were eager to criticize them, especially Blake, the interview host, for participating in such a light-hearted quiz, asking her co-stars what their careers might have been if they hadn't chosen acting. Or, in Colleen's case, writing, Blake opened the interview. Isabella clarified that Colleen would be riding horses all the time, while Colleen stated she would like to be a chef. Jenny went on to say that she was afraid of horses, citing discomfort caused by their butts and hooves. She said, It kills me that their butts are shiny. To which everyone laughed uncontrollably. It's ridiculous, a ponytail out of the butt. Blake then requested them to reveal their zodiac signs to each other in order to determine how compatible they are. What would be a nice addition to the human body? She then questioned. I want an additional arm. Is the keyboard being operated by three hands? Well, replied Colleen, as Jenna contemplated how much she would like having some wings. We said absolutely nothing about our movie. We appreciate you coming, Blake said. I believe that will help the movie get sold. Jenny laughed. Blake posted a video of the interview to her Instagram account last week, with the description. The best thing to come out of, it ends with us, for me is becoming friends with, Jenny Slate, and all of these women. Colleen Hoover and Isabella Ferrer, and I am incredibly proud of this movie, so that says a lot. When marketing ends and I have no more justifications to dress up and spend time on my couch with you ladies, 
I'm going to be unhappy. Outraged viewers rushed to the comment area to attack them right away. I'm not sure what to think. You didn't understand the movie's main goal at all. A user said. I'm disappointed and sad. Another person questioned. This is a movie about abuse. Can you please promote appropriately? Another person said. Blake is here only for fashion. The message that this film conveys doesn't pique her curiosity. Shallow. To say that this is so disappointing would be an understatement as someone who has read the book, as someone who liked Blake, and as a DV survivor. Read a fourth remark. This is the most tone-deaf thing I've ever seen, exclaimed the fifth. This film tackles domestic abuse. Why are you marketing it like a Barbie picture? When are you going to discuss domestic abuse? Another person scolded. Trying to play this movie off as a fun rom-com is wrong and disgusting. We want to know about the victims and how common domestic violence is in our society, not about shows and your new hair care regimen. Make use of the platform you have been given, another person commented. It's a real shame and feels like an insult to DV survivors the way you've chosen to market this movie. Very disappointed, and I find it hard to accept that the author would endorse it. I'm really dissatisfied with the way you're pushing this movie. Another said, I loved you as an actress, but I won't be watching any of your movies anymore. You are ignoring the seriousness of domestic abuse. You chose to openly ignore what could have been a wonderful opportunity to raise awareness about domestic violence. Another irate audience member said, As a well-meaning fan, this girl talk session reinforced multiple stereotypes about women and doesn't address the single most important theme in your film domestic abuse. You can use this opportunity to hold felonies accountable, to change the lives of countless people, and to support and encourage women to speak up. However, your attention is on clothes, hair, and flowers. Women deserve better from you. We are more than this. Some refer to themselves as Team Justin, alluding to an apparent conflict between Blake and the actor. Fans noticed that Justin, 40, and the blonde beauty didn't do any press together before the film's premiere which sparked rumors of tensions between the two growing for weeks. In addition to acting in the movie, Justin also directed and acted as one of its producers. The on-screen couple was also not photographed together at last week's U.S. premiere. Astute social media observers also observed that Blake and writer Colleen had lately unfollowed Justin on Instagram. Actress Jenny absolutely sidestepped a question on Justin on the red carpet at the event adding to the suspicions. How did it feel to have Justin both direct and be a scene partner? Deadline asked the celebrity. She retorted, I mean, what a demanding job to have to do so many things. I saw that I was thinking, wow, I just want to have one job at once. I truly enjoy writing, and it's unique to be able to write, but I was thinking, yeah, I'm good with just acting. I genuinely enjoy acting. I've felt that way a lot. Blake and Justin reportedly got into a fight while filming scenes involving abuse because of his dismissive attitude toward her. Input. According to a source, the insider said that Justin took a very chauvinistic stance toward the subject and restricted his attention to what he believed to be the abusive male viewpoint. James failed to take Blake's character's point of view into account during scenes that showed abuse concentrating only on what he thought was the abusive male viewpoint. The statement read, His chauvinistic approach created a tense atmosphere on set. The insider stated that Justin almost became the character, and that he was borderline abusive on filming. Some women on set felt that Justin was being borderline abusive to them, and that he lacked professionalism and remorse. They stated, nearly turning him into the character. It is unsettling to direct a film about domestic abuse that is so serious and significant without including the women in the process. Justin collaborated with nonprofit group No More, which focuses on combating domestic and sexual violence. While filming the film, an executive from No More told the rap that Justin really wanted to know more about the details about intimate partner violence and wanted to make sure that he was representing it as accurately and sensitively as possible. We wanted the audience to understand what was happening, but we also didn't want the scenes showing abuse to be too difficult for them to see. Last week, he talked with CBS Mornings on the challenges of depicting a domestic abuse relationship on screen, although he acknowledged that, as a man, he had his own biases. Toward the subject, he asserted that he made sure the film had a female gaze. I will always bring my own biases because I am a man. He remarked, 
That's one of the reasons I was scared to even direct this movie, let alone star in it. I never wanted to put myself in this movie. I wanted to make sure it always had a female gaze.